war in revolt. Dead. All dead. My dear mother. Octavia, the wife I love. Somebody's got to stand up for these icons. You know, with them being dead and everything. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Myths, the series that finds the biggest myths that people actually believe and dispels them one by one. I think we better say clearly what you mean, gentlemen. I mean, Nero must somehow be removed. In this installment, we'll be looking at the five myths about historical icons that had us burning our textbooks. We won't be covering any historical icons from America, however, as we'll be saving the truth behind those stories for another list. Some say they don't exist. I don't know. Myth number five, Napoleon was really short. So Bill, what you're telling me essentially is that Napoleon was a short, dead dude. <laughs> oh yeah. People often use the term Napoleon complex when talking about someone who is short and aggressive. Say it, you giant beast. <laughs> Say I'm 6'1". Maybe if you stood on top of that pot of gold you have at the end of your rainbow. This, of course, derives its meaning from the legendary French emperor and general, Napoleon Bonaparte. The myth may be associated with this military genius, but the reality of Napoleon's height was that he was five foot six, a perfectly average number which was likely lost in translation between the French and English units of measurement during Napoleon's time in power. Another idea historians have is that the British perpetuated this myth as anti-Napoleon propaganda. Add to this the fact that Napoleon tended to surround himself with a personal guard of tall soldiers and that he possessed a legendary temper, and you might have a number of other reasons why this myth has been believed for so many years. Myth number four, Emperor Nero fiddled while Rome burned. Now die like an emperor, by your own hand. Depending on who you ask, the reign of Emperor Nero from 54 to 68 AD was a nasty one, marked by tyranny, violence, and corruption. That's the excuse of every tyrant in history from Nero to Bonaparte. After all, we're talking about a ruler who reportedly murdered his own mother during his rise to power. There is one dastardly deed which Emperor Nero cannot be saddled with, however, and it's the one that everyone remembers. His reported fiddling while Rome burned. Our family is in financial ruins and you, you played the flute while Rome burned. Nero fiddled whilst Rome burned. Besides the fact that the fiddle wouldn't be invented until hundreds of years after Nero's reign, the truth behind this tall tale is that he wasn't even present in Rome when the flame started. Although there are certain historians that have chronicled that the emperor might have sung during the Great Fire of 64 AD, Nero actually assisted in fighting the blaze upon his return to Rome, and even opened up his palace gardens to those displaced in the chaos. So he wasn't all that bad. Well, he was, but still. This then the end of Nero. Myth number three, Catherine the Great of Russia died while having sex with a horse. I know you're tired of loving, of loving with nobody to love. This nasty rumor that Catherine the Great of Russia expired while engaging in equian coitus was likely spread after Catherine's death by her enemies, including possibly her brother, with whom she had a strained and difficult relationship. She more than likely died from a stroke, although this mean-spirited rumour was probably started largely due to Catherine's well-documented love life and extramarital affairs during the years prior to the 1762 coup, which of course led to Prussian-born Catherine ascending to Russia's throne as her sole ruler. You just said you had sex with a horse. No! Whores! Not horse! Horse. Other rumours of her death, such as one which claimed Catherine perished while sitting on a toilet, failed to take root. But this one, for some reason or another, lives as one of history's great myths. It's, it's a woman f***ing a horse. We get there, and you know, we think it's going to be awesome, and it is not as cool as it sounds like it would be, man. It is, it's, it's, it's kind of gross. Myth number two. Marie Antoinette was famous for saying, let them eat cake. The phrase, let them eat cake, is often attributed to French ruler Marie Antoinette to describe her indifference and ignorance to the plight of the poor. And when they went to the queen to tell her her subjects had no bread, do you know what she said? Let them eat cake. Surprise, surprise, there's actually no evidence that Marie Antoinette ever said such a thing in the years prior to the French Revolution. One day Join these people's heroes, we will go where they go. 
The truth behind this myth is that despite living a lavish lifestyle, Marie Antoinette was by all counts a fairly generous person with regards to her charitable donations, and didn't harbour the ruthless disregard towards France's poor that the myth implies. That's such nonsense, I would never say that. Instead, the phrase was thought to have been popularised by the philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau in 1766, when the young Marie Antoinette was only 10 years old. It's believed that Rousseau was actually referring to the former monarch Marie Therese, yet Marie Antoinette continually receives the credit. Myth number one, Albert Einstein wasn't good at math. One particle of unitanium has a nuclear reaction with a flux capacitor. Carry the two, changing its atomic isotoner into a radioactive spider. <laughs> you, science! The internet's full of those little tidbits of misinformation that have you believing you could be as successful as some of history's greats. Wikipedia is the best thing ever. Anyone in the world can write anything they want about any subject. So you know you are getting the best possible information you've likely stumbled upon the idea that this particular genius wasn't good at math. I just finished your book and there's only one problem, Einstein's wrong. <laughs> the truth is that Einstein actually excelled at mathematics from an early age, although he clashed sharply with the educators and dropped out of school in Munich, Germany when he was 15. The real roots behind this myth emerged from the fact that Einstein failed his entrance exam to a Swiss polytechnic school his first time around in 1895. It was a 26-year-old Swiss patent clerk doing physics in his spare time would change the world. Can you imagine if Einstein would have given that up just to get drunk with his buddies in Vienna every night? The 16-year-old Einstein passed the exam's math section, but failed out of botany, language and zoology, before finally being accepted into the school the next year. So sorry to say, Timothy, but you do have to do your math homework, and you better do it well. So which of these myths did you believe? Uh... What? Is what Google searches are asking about historical icons. Did Einstein have a twin brother? Did Napoleon do good things? Did Catherine the Great be the serfs? For more fiddle fiddling top tens and horseplay top fives, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. What will they do to me? They will kill you. But they won't get in.